I was hoping you'd be by. We've received letters from Archon Redanus of Tevinter and King Marcus of Nevara. For both monarchs to come to us is nearly unheard of. I assume that means they both want something very badly from us. You're quite correct. Archon Redanus requests that the Inquisition, as a neutral party, destroy a venatory cult on the Nevaran Tevinter border. King Marcus asks the same, but demands we pledge allegiance to Nevara instead of Tevinter. What course of action would you take if you were in my place? Strained as their relationship with Orle is, I would assist the Imperium. Their friendship is difficult to win, and Marcus is a fading power. To winter is the longer, richer game. What sort of man is the King of Navarra? At this point, elderly. Many fear his health will soon fail him. Still, he is a Pentecost. Their dynasty is exceptionally strong in Nevara. As a Pentagast, will Cassandra be upset if we don't help her relatives? With all respect to Sigar Pentagast, her interest in politics is best described as... thin. Why is the ruler of Tevinter turning on the Venatori? He has little reason to love them. Archon Redanus has rightly identified Corypheus as competition. Few monarchs relish a self-styled god showing up to claim their throne. Tell me about Redanus. Like most Tevinter rulers, he's heir to an ancient bloodline, politically shrewd, and a highly skilled mage. Rumor also claims he has an incredibly soft spot for cats. Tell the Archon the Inquisition will do Tevinter the favor of wiping out the Venatori on its borders. Very good, Inquisitor. We'll inform him at once. You know, Viv, you're not bad with that staff. You will address me as Enchanter Vivienne, court mage to the Empire of Orlais, or Madame de Fair, not Viv. Oh, right, ma'am. Sorry, ma'am. Hmm, yes, ma'am works as well. Wind is always going someplace. What happens when it gets there? Apparently, it dons a hat and prattles endlessly. Dorian is like you, Vivienne. I think not. The veil sings around both of you. It whispers through you and makes you both brighter. The same could be said of any mage. Beyond that, I have little in common with a noble from Tevinter. No. For most mages, it's a tool, a toil. You make it you. Nonsense, as usual. So, ma'am, with the magic, do you prefer fire, or lightning, or cold, or what? The proper tool for the proper task. Fire reminds an enemy that you can destroy everything around. Lightning puts the fear of the Maker into her. Cold makes her think you implacable, while spirit energy conjures fears of demons. I like cold, because it freezes them, and then they break into little bits when I chop them in half. That's fine too, dear. that could turn out like this. I like your horns, the Iron Bull. But they're dragon horns, not bull horns. You could have named yourself the Iron Dragon. Oh. Shit. That would have been better. You 
you were happy at the Winter Palace, Vivian. Your point, demon? You were still sharp, but happy. Golden, glittering, everything gleamed. Rules that let you win. One does not wish to brag. That's why you're happier being a noble than a mage. You fear demons, not people. People can only kill you. Gown perfect, shoes perfect, hat perfect, staff a symbol, not a weapon. My rope, my people, my... Out, please. My dear Inquisitor, please restrain your pet demon. I do not want it addressing me. He's not doing any harm, Vivian. It's a demon, darling. All it can do is harm. Everything bright. Roar of anger as the demon rears. No, I will not fall. No one will control me ever again. Flash of white as the world comes back. Shaking, hollow, harrowed, but smiling at Templars to show them I'm me. I am not like that. I can protect you. If Templars come for you, I will kill them. Delightful. Nugs are kind. Almost everything is bigger than they, but they're still happy. If you hold out your hand, they will nuzzle it. It's how they call you friend. Remember, Inquisitor, the harmless-looking ones are always the most dangerous. Nugs aren't dangerous. I was not referring to Nugs. fond of them, no. But you and I are fine as long as you don't do any weird crap. Lying awake, sheets soaked in sweat, afraid to call the Tamasarans, shadows make shapes in the dark. If it gets in my head, how do I cut it out? Itching, shaking, tears slide cold down my cheeks. Tama, I'm scared. Yeah, weird crap like that. Pretty much what I meant. with the Inquisition bringing in Templars. Of course. Magic works best when responsibly supervised for the safety and protection of all. Your views on magic don't quite mesh with what I was taught about mages outside the queue. Life is a series of necessary restrictions, Iron Bull. The small-minded beat against every wall they find. The wise learn to make the most of the options they have. in the last village wanted you to pick her up and take her clothes off. Most people do. In her mind, you were very big. Well, that's flattering.
there. Don't come any closer. We have swords. Scared. Too many dead. Too many demons. I'm with the Inquisition. I'm not here to hurt anyone. The Inquisition? Here? Forgive me. I should have known. How's it been? Take this thing apart, they said. War's service, over, they said. Imperial Get it majesty. done by tomorrow, they Long said. Long may she reign. My men inform me that the Citadel's defenses are deactivated. I cannot thank you enough. The civil war is over. Gaspard de Chalon has been defeated. Céline's throne is safe. It's over? That grasping brute is gone? Thank the Maker. So much has happened and we didn't even know. Have we been out of contact for so long? Tell me about the situation here. There were orders. A chance for peace, they said. Pull back, they said. So we did. Then... The undead appeared. We couldn't hold them back. I told my men to activate the fort's defenses. A foolish move, born of desperation. There was so much about the old elven magic we never knew. We couldn't control it. We retreated, but not everyone made it through the gates. I couldn't. I couldn't save them. We've been trapped for weeks. Supplies were incoming, but who knows what happened to them. I found one of your soldiers at the Eastern Ramparts. She wanted you to have this. Fabian's ring. She is gone then. I hoped, I prayed that she yet lived. Thank you, I... I will make sure this gets to her family. I must take my leave. Good day, Inquisitor. Grass doesn't mind anything. People walk on it, horses eat it. It's always content. It's probably thankful it doesn't have ears and can't listen to you. What can I do for you, my dear? Is it too much to hope that you've brought me the heart of the snowy wyvern? I've brought you the heart as requested. Inquisitor, you are a treasure. Please accept this as your payment. I must begin work immediately. I should apologize. I must admit that I had completely misjudged you, Inquisitor. I would like you to come with me to see this through. This should only take a moment, Inquisitor. I'm here, my darling. There's nothing here now. Bastion is dead. I can hardly believe. It was the Winter Send Ball. My first visit to the Imperial Palace. The Circle sent a dozen of us to entertain the nobility. I was in awe of everyone and everything, and then our eyes met. Bastien spent the entire ball at my side. The Dowager tried to have him killed for slighting her, but he didn't care. 
Obviously, he was smitten. But what did you think of him? He was a dashing rogue. And any defects he might have had were made up for with rank and importance. It was a more innocent time, I suppose. And now he's gone, and I... I must write to his son, Laurent. And his sister will make a terrible fuss if she isn't informed first. And I'll need to arrange for the Chantry services. Maker only knows how long that will take. If I can help you, just say the word. No, my dear. I'll handle everything. Excuse me, I have so much to do. Yes? How do you stay so civil with everyone, Josephine? Bonds of circumstance among the nobility are fickle. Civility is the only constant everyone admires. And I do deplore rudeness in those who know better. Does it even become a strain sometimes? Well, it can be trying. There is no shortage of self-regard among the nobility. The game can be wearying, discouraging, and extremely baneful. But honestly, I'd miss meeting people. I've made the most fascinating friends. Better than making piles of interesting enemies. I've had both, sometimes depending on which way the wind has been blowing at the time. But worth it, all in all, I think. Let's speak later. Another time. Need others know this. My lady inquisitor. There is but one truth. All what work have you been doing to help us? Currently, my efforts and are focused on determining what Corypheus is lies. and from where his power comes. The elven orb he carries is what draws my attention. I wonder if the power he used to tear open the Fade, in fact, came from the orb. Perhaps it is even the source of your anchor. If I learn of its origin, I may also learn what Corypheus now intends, as well as his weaknesses. Do you know anything about his dragon? It has the appearance of an archdemon. Of that, I am certain. A true archdemon, however, is supposedly the corrupted form of an old god. Has Corypheus actually dug up one of the ancient prisons? If so, why has a new blight not begun? His dragon is something else, something connected to his blighted nature as well as his magic. Beyond that, I cannot say. Is it even possible that Corypheus could succeed? The Black City exists. Wherever one goes in the Fade, it is visible in the sky. The last time Corypheus and his cohort stormed its doors, they unleashed the Blight upon the world. This time, perhaps he might indeed gain untold power, becoming something unto a god. It is also possible he could unleash something far worse than the Blights. So yes, Corypheus could succeed in his goal. If not, his attempt alone could destroy the world. Corypheus says I'm a rival. Does that mean... Could you become a god? That depends. Are you prepared to use your anchor to enter the Black City? No, never. Tell Corypheus that, and see if he believes you. I could use your company for my excursions outside Skyhold. I have spent my share of time wandering the wilderness in the company of others, Inquisitor. Thank you for the invitation, but for now I will restrict my efforts to researching the Arcane. However you can help, it's appreciated. Continue prodding at Corypheus, Inquisitor. Elicit a reaction, and we may yet learn from it. Now that you've seen the Inquisition up close, what are your impressions? It is remarkable what you have built. I will give you that. Leniana has built a network of spies beyond anything Thedas has seen. All this in precious little time, conjured from thin air through the power of fervor alone. I wonder if Corypheus suspected what he was enabling, just as I wonder what will become of all this once he is defeated. We have to defeat him first, then I'll worry about what's next. Should that happen, the 
world will lie at your feet, more or less. Beware the heights you reach, Inquisitor. When this is done, many will be eager to knock you back down. I'll leave you to the garden. As you like. I trust all is well. So, you're a candidate for Divine now? So I am informed. Is that something you actually want? Why should what I want matter? Why shouldn't it matter? Don't you have the right to be happy? It is very simple. The Chantry needs to survive. To do that, it must change. I have never believed in asking another to do what you are unwilling to do yourself. So I look upon this as an opportunity. I owe it to myself and all of Thedas to seek the Sunburst throne. There are other ways you can change things. Perhaps. I may not have a choice in the matter if the Chantry clerics pick another. That's enough for now. Another time, then. Your Worship. Can we talk about the Bull's Chargers? Certainly. What can I tell you? Have you had any other interesting jobs? We went up against Gatlas Giants in Ferelden. Not actual giants, but big guys, all wearing a dragon's weight and armor. Might as well be fighting golems. The chief challenged Gatler himself to a single combat. Gatler laughed and called him a horned savage. The chief broke a dam and flooded the valley. Last we saw of Gatler was a bunch of bubbles as we swam away. We'll talk later. You have a problem. That over there is a full tavern, but everyone's drinking alone. They're all up their own asses about the Inquisition. I can't have fun with everybody whinging, and they'll fall on their swords before Corifinus can push them. I'm thinking pranks. Set a few up, knock a few down. You win or not. But I'm the Inquisitor. You know, the leader. Right, they'll never suspect you. What, titles are only for getting away with bad stuff? Let's do something fun. Come on. Lead the way. What, really? Really. <laughs> I knew you were different. Let's go. Right, General Uptight is gone. Have a search about. Find something to mess with and give your soldiers a laugh. Desk. Oh yes, center of the empire and all that. What to do? What to do? All right, Sarah. What do you want to do? Thing looks heavy. Don't want to move or break it. I got it. Easy one. Just a slip of something under here. There. Won't notice much, but it's just that little bit wonky. He's so in control that'll piss him royally. I tell one of the soldiers, and boom, the general seems like people. And since he works for you, you seem like people. Come on, next one. Right, little lady prissy pants. Have a look for something she likes too much. the door where she greets every important idiot yes well Sarah what do you have in mind um, <laughs> get a bucket classic yeah five minutes of sloppy boss gets you weeks of happy kitchen staff except for the one who cleans it up I suppose but whatever next stop Right, something to get our shadow of birds loosened up. 
Gotta be something. Have a search. What's that? A locked... No, leave that. Not interested in her hidden things. Not for just a bit of fun. Maybe... Feed her messenger something gassy? No, bears don't pop. But they flap and... Uh... Hmm. Who is up there? Go! <laughs> that was fun! An inquisitor of the people, still remembering you're one of them. If all they got was the Herald stuff, the serious bit, you'd start to sound pretty scary. That works, but not for long. Whatever it takes. I'd start throwing pies if it kept people inspired. Pies is so good! And Corypheness would never do that. Good thing for you, innit? Because from the bottom, everyone up top sort of seems the same. Anyway, fun time, Inquisitor. You! Ulfric! You did it! <laughs> I wanted to thank you. When you came to see me, if there's anything... This sounded much better in my head. I trust you're feeling better? I... yes. Is it always that bad? The pain comes and goes. Sometimes I feel as if I'm back there. I should not have pushed myself so far that day. Skyhold won't fall apart if you take an hour for yourself now and then. I'll keep that in mind. I've never told anyone what truly happened to me at Ferelden's Circle. I was... not myself after that. I was angry. For years, that anger blinded me. I'm not proud of the man that made me. Now I can put some distance between myself and everything that happened. It's a start. The past isn't always pleasant. Sometimes you have to let go and move on. I can't forget what happened, but it led me here. I can make that mean something. Anyway, I meant to thank you, not trouble you further. You've enough to worry about. How are you holding up? I've met good people here. Knowing they have my back, it helps. You certainly keep interesting company. I suppose I do as well. <laughs>